No better way to spend a Friday evening than to celebrate the existence and the maintenance of love. In the midst of such a crazy, absurd time in our beautiful and crazy and absurd world, Joseph and Terry have given us a real gift, a chance to come together and witness as they promise their lives to one another. For let us be clear, this is what we are here to do today. We are here to recognize the love that's in our midst. Joseph and Terry were lucky enough to find one another twice, and they were smart enough to recognize that the other was his beloved for life. According to some traditions, no person can marry a couple as you are both adults and responsible for your words and actions. Accordingly, you marry each other through the recitation of vows. The two of you marry each other by vowing yourself to the other. All the rest is really commentary. No ceremony, no piece of paper, and no law can create your marriage. What this ceremony will do, however, is witness and affirm the choice you have made to stand together as partners in life. I now call, in the spirit of the strength of the family that is so important to Joseph and Terry, I now call uh, Joseph's niece, Anna DePaolo, to come read a blessing. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 through 13, 8, A. Be ambitious for the higher gifts, and I am going to show you a way that is better than any of them. If I have all the eloquence of men or of angels, but speak without love, I am simply a gong, booming or a cymbal clashing. If I have the gift of prophecy, understanding all the mysteries there are, and knowing everything, and if I have faith in all its fullness to move mountains, but without love, then I am nothing at all. If I give away all that I possess, piece by piece, and if I even let them take my body to burn it, but am without love, it will do me no good whatever. Love is always patient and kind. It is never jealous. Love is never boastful or conceited. It is never rude or selfish. It does not take offense, and it is not resentful. Love takes no pleasure in other people's sins, but delights in the truth. It is always ready to excuse, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love does not come to an end. The word of the Lord. When I spoke with Joseph and Terry about meeting their respective families, they spoke about how welcoming you were, how Shirley and Jackson opened their arms wide to Joseph, how Joseph's mom, Dana, has been so important and loving to both of them, how they have been wrapped in love and family by Sandra and Andrea, and especially Victoria. They also spoke about their grandmothers, who were so important to both of them. The faith this couple shares is awesome. The faith in all of you to come from all over the world and all over Los Angeles in rush hour traffic <laughs> <laughs> to see them married on this day is awesome. Their faith, strong enough to reach out to the other over the Pacific Ocean because each of you knew that you were the one their faith in their ability to balance each other and to learn from one another. All of us here are tied together through the awesome faith of Joseph and Terry, 
and their love of family and friendship. I now call on David Richmond, who will join us in honoring our faith and our fathers, including Joseph's father, Anthony, who is not here in presence, but in spirit, and Jackson, who Terry and Joseph are so happy to have here with them. <laughs> I want all of you to echo with me as I sing. All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. not live in isolation. Their love is a source of strength, which they may nourish not only each other, but also the people around them. Terry and Joseph wanted to include all of you in their day. So I ask all of you, do you promise to support Joseph and Terry in marriage with respect and reverence, to share in their sorrow and joys, and if so, I ask you to please answer with a very loud, we do. We, we do. do. The terms of this agreement to which you all consented is clear. This is a union of two intelligent, caring, mindful adults. Be respectful and supportive of them as they journey through and grow in their marriage. You may all be seated. We've come to the point in the ceremony where you say your vows to one another. If you are able to keep the vows you take here today, it's not because of any law, but out of desire to love and be loved by another fully, without limitation. Then your life will have the joy and the home you have established will continue to be a place in which you both find growth and freedom and responsibility. You come together today not solely to be married, but to solidify your family with Victoria as well. Before speaking your vows to one another, Joseph, you had chosen first to commemorate your commitment to your daughter. This ring was a ring that my great-grandfather gave to my grandmother when my grandmother was about Victoria's age. And I give this ring to Victoria today as to remind her of my love for her so that you always remember that you are my most precious gift. And today, our family gets bigger. So I'm going to ask you now 
to read the vows that you have written for one another. <laughs> I, Jerry Ma, can you just let me be my lawful wedded spouse? You are my strength and my shield, and I thank you for making me part of your life. I promise to help shoulder our challenges, but I'm sure that there's nothing that we can't take on together. I vow with God's grace to love and to cherish you. In good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, always and forever. My heart wants to be near your heart. I believe that love is all there is. And there is nothing else. So today, before our family and friends, and with the memory of our dearly departed in our hearts, my vow is a simple one. I promise God and the Virgin Mary that I will love you because love is all there is. Now I'm going to ask Joseph Vincent Leahy. I, I now ask you in the presence of your loved ones and most importantly in front of your beloved, do you, Joseph, take Terry to be your husband, to delight in all the days of your life, to hold up in times of pain, to communicate with and be present to? Do you promise to show him patience and to remember that you are no longer alone and can depend on him? Do you promise to encourage this kind, steadfast man, helping him grow and supporting him always? And Terence Courtney Marr, may I ask you, in the presence of loved ones and in front of your beloved, do you, Terry, take Joseph to be your husband, to delight in all the days of your life, to hold up in times of pain? Do you promise to show him patience and to remember that you are no longer alone and can depend on him? Do you promise to encourage this respectful, kind, and principled man, helping him grow and loving him always? Joseph, will you take your ring and put it on Terry, take Terry's ring and put it on Terry's finger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Terry, take Joseph's ring and put it on Joseph's finger. And I'm going to ask you to hold one another's hands, your own, your hands touching one another, and repeat after me. I give you this ring as a daily reminder of my love for you. Okay, finally, there are two acts that will complete this wedding ceremony. The first is my joyfully telling you that you have spoken the words and performed the rites that officially unite your lives together in marriage in the hearts of all the people that are here, in the eyes of God, and according to the state of California, you are now married. In the 
tradition I come from, this is the point of the ceremony that in some ways is the most important. It is time for the couple to take a few moments at the beginning of their marriage, to have a few private moments, to reflect on this day's events and share in one another's company. So as the, as the recessional happens, we ask the family and friends to move into, into the reception area and the newlyweds will join you shortly. Please welcome our newlyweds. Thank <laughs> you.